everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we will be finishing our how to build a Ford through to small block Windsor or in our case, a 347 Stroker. We're gonna be putting on some final touches today and then we're going to be prepping it and taking it to our dyno shop. Alternatively, you could just put this into your engine bay and start it up and break your engine in how you normally would. I'll put a link down below in the description on how to break in a flat tap of cam. Uh, there's an awesome article Summit Racing did, and I'll leave that link down below in the description. And then after we're done with the dyno, we're going to come back to the shop, and we are going to do some health checks on the 302, uh, things you should also be doing at home after you've broken in your cam uh, to make sure your engine is okay, and it's going to be okay in the future, and there's not little metal bits in it or anything like that that would cause you to need to uh, reassemble it. But before we go any further, let's once again thank our amazing sponsor, Summit Racing, SummitRacing.com has been sending us all kinds of amazing things, uh, all sorts of parts I've been calling out and leaving down below in the description. They've been an incredible sponsor to work with, so make sure you buy all your speed parts from SummitRacing.com. And just for fun, go ahead and go down in the comments and leave how much power you think this thing's going to make. Don't skip ahead, I'll know if you do. I think, uh, I think it'll make... 380, maybe 400 horsepower for Lucky, and maybe like 410 foot-pounds of torque. I would be absolutely stoked if it made 380 and 410. That would be incredible. I would be over the moon, honestly, if it made that kind of power, because uh, it's not a lot of displacement. You know, it's only 347 cubic inches, and the cam uh, is a fairly mild cam. We could go a lot bigger on this cam uh, and get even more power out of it, however much it makes. So. That's kind of fun to do. Leave down below. Let me know what you think it'll make. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get our engine prepared and off to our dyno shop. So before we load our engine up and take it to the dyno, it is important to uh, have a nice engine sling so it's easy to take it off there. It's important to have engine feet so it doesn't have to sit in like an old tire or something like that, especially when you have a nice new performance engine like this one. Make sure you have your coil attached. Make sure you bring all of the paperwork and the handheld unit for the throttle body. You have a carburetor that doesn't really apply to you. And make sure to bring your cam information card. You are going to want this. The person who's running your dyno is gonna want this information, the firing order and all that jazz. Not to mention, you're going to have to know your compression ratio so you can give that information to your dyno guy and he can put the correct fuel in. It's also important just to know all that pertinent information for them to tune it. So let's get this thing loaded up and headed over to our dyno at Superior Automotive in Placentia, California. And before we go anywhere, when you're putting an engine hoist on, make sure that these bolts in the head are as far in as they can go. They should be in about as far as my finger is because you don't want just a few threads on the head and then it just pulls the threads right out. That could be catastrophic. So make sure these are nice and slunk in there. Okay, engine all loaded up, ready to go to the dyno. Put some tape over our throttle body there, which is something you always want to do. Even if you're just installing it in a car, you don't want anything getting down the carb or throttle body. And we have some ratchet straps right to the head, down, and down, and you can grab this and try to wiggle it around. That's not going anywhere. And then some wood against the truck bed to not damage anything. All right, we're doing a pull, 35 to five. Be happy at a 400. We're at 410 at the very beginning. Sounds like it's still a pull up. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sounds great. a bunch another another successful dyno session <laughs> all righty so after you have broken in your engine we're going to do some health checks for it to make sure that we can proceed with you know driving it and having fun and uh, putting miles on it because you want to check these things out to make sure that your engine is healthy and then it's not going to destroy itself it would be an awful big bummer if uh, you spent all this money and put all this time into something that you know it wasn't happy and there's something you could change and save it so that's why we're going to pull the breather and what we're looking for on the end of the breather is milkshake condensation is normal you know a little bit of water a little bit of condensation is okay that's oil but normally there's just a teeny bit of condensation that's fine water by itself a tiny amount is okay. That happens from the engine getting hot and cooling down and tightening up and cooling down. And you know, atmospheric air has a little bit of water in it. It's not uncommon to find it here. But what is bad if you find here is what looks like a chocolate milkshake. So that means water from the engine is mixing with oil from the engine and eventually will destroy itself. But ours looks great. It should look like this. That's what your breather should look like. That's something to definitely 100% check after you've been running it for a bit or broken it in. Also, you want to go ahead and pull your dipstick and check it out. No milkshake here. Everything looks fantastic. There's a little bit of molly lube there. That's what this gray stuff is. Remember all the different glubes and stuff we used on lifters? That's what that is. It dissolves in oil, but there is no milkshake. So that's fantastic and we can move on to draining our oil, 
cutting open our filter. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna drain our oil and look for any kind of metallic glitters or any pieces of engine that you wouldn't want in there. Um, it's, it's very apparent in like the first quart or so. Um, Cause think about it, if there's metal in here, it's gonna settle to the bottom, so it's gonna come out first. It'll also collect on the end of the drain bolt. You'll see big metal chunks. So what I like to do is in the first quart, especially on a nice clear pan like this, so our first quart and maybe half quart is out, and we can look very closely on this nice gray pan and see if there's any metal in there. All I'm seeing is a bit of molly lube from our lifters. I'm seeing absolutely nothing, no glitters, nothing that would spell engine disaster. If this was all glittery or if there was big chunks of metal in there, usually that's bearing material, um, that means that your engine's eating itself and you have to basically go back to square one and restart your build. But most of the time, if you follow the steps like I've done in this entire build series, you're gonna be okay. Like this engine so far, all good. So I'm gonna let the rest of the oil out and then we're gonna cut open the oil filter. Again, you can check the end of your oil pan drain bolt and if there's any metal, it'll collect here on the magnet, but there's absolutely zero. So that is a really good sign. You can see all the molly lube coming out. That's not like used oil. I know it looks like dirty on camera but it actually looks really clean in person and that darkness is just like, you know, the lube we used on the lifters and a couple other places where we use that dark, you know, really dense lubrication. That's what it looks like uh, coming out. So nothing too bad here. So we're going to let this all drain out and we're going to replace our drain bolt and move on to our oil filter. Alrighty. Now with our oil pan drain, we can remove our filter. Sometimes after they've been run, they're a little stuck on there. Gingerly remove our oil filter. There we go, perfect. Didn't even leak out. Very cool. Probably because the, probably the engine's been tilted every which way. Actually, while I'm here, I'm gonna replace our oil filter. Just like normally would, a little bit of oil. This oil is pretty darn new. I'm okay reusing it for a sealing purpose. And then clean off our mating surface. Perfect, nice and clean. And we can install our new oil filter. There we go. Just twist that bad boy on. That way it doesn't, you know, dribble oil all over the place while we're not really paying attention. Very cool. So the first thing we can do, remove our O-ring, then grab our oil filter cutting tool. Some people just go around this brim with a pair of metal shears, but I have the tool, so I'm gonna use it, and the link is down below in the description to this bad boy. And if you plan on building any kind of engine, I suggest owning this tool. It's not terribly expensive, and they make fairly cheap versions of it as well. So you just fix it to the filter, give it a couple tightens, go around, a couple tightens, go around, and you just keep going around until it cuts all the way through, like I believe mine just has. There we go. Just be really careful when you're removing the lid and the filter body, is you've basically created a razor blade covered in oil. So be really careful. So we can pull our filter material out using a pair of channel locks. There we go, set that aside. So once you have your filter material, you can just spread apart the fins like this. And you might find just a teensy bit of metal in there that's not totally abnormal, but if it's like a ton of metal, then you're in trouble. But just check every, I don't know, every third fold or so. It should look like this, where there's no glints, no glitters, no pieces of metal. This looks, Absolutely fantastic. You can even 
really go after it and take the filter material completely out and spread it apart and look at it like this. You can see there is absolutely no metal. This looks fantastic. And just like that, we are at the final piece for our Ford 302 build. It's our air cleaner sent over by Summit Racing and the link is down below in the description. And this is a really nice unit, check this out. Oh yeah, so it matches our valve covers. Oh, it's gonna look so good. It looks like a million bucks. Heck yeah. So on this, there is no like wing nut like you traditionally find, but there are threads on the back, so you're just gonna spin this down onto the stud to uh, secure it. We have our instructions, gasket, Insulation hardware, filter material. And this is an interesting one because this isn't like a 14 inch air cleaner, it's actually a 13 inch air cleaner. So remember that when you're ordering new filter material and then the base plate for it. Oh, cool, the base plate's blue too. I thought this was going to be black. Awesome. So we can go put that on. And now that we're back from the dyno, we can finally put our air filter on. Usually you do this uh, once the whole engine is in the car and basically you're ready to drive off. Um, but I don't have a car to put this in just yet. So we're just gonna pretend like it's in the engine bay, just about ready to go. So we can put in our short carb stun. Making sure that's on finger tight. Put on our base plate. Now sometimes it matters how this is orientated, but because of our throttle body, it doesn't matter. Usually these little divots out you know, sit on the float bowls, but we don't have a carburetor, so it can go any way you want. And we can put on our 13 inch filter material. Very cool. And then we can put on our awesome air cleaner plate, lining it up with the stud. And we're just gonna spin this on until it gets, oh, it's getting snug. Oh, perfect. Wow, that looks fantastic. And check it out, this is basically what our finished product looks like, except for headers putting in the car and all that, but for this engine build series, I'm calling this done. So that is how to finish off your Ford Windsor 302. This series has been an absolute blast. I didn't think I'd be able to build a third engine on this channel. Third time's the charm, and this thing I think is very lucky. Those heads are incredible, the camshaft, and especially the throttle body. The Summit Racing throttle body, not my words, but Joe, the dyno guy's words, and he has dealt with all kinds of different throttle body, you know, type things like that. And he said this is the best one he's worked with. It's super responsive, super easy to work with. The little screen that comes with it is super easy to understand. The tuning curve that are built in are fantastic. It starts up easy, it runs hard. He's also saying that the actual holes that go into the throttle body are curved instead of straight up like on some other units. And he said that was a big help with, you know, airflow going over the throttle body and into the engine. I, he said that was a big deal. I believe him, he's been doing this forever. So that is a huge, huge, huge endorsement for what I would consider to be a more budget friendly unit. Just because it's budget friendly doesn't mean it's not high performance, which this one clearly is. It's amazing. I might get one for my Camaro. So our small block ended up making 441 horsepower, which is a ton. Usually, you know, kind of back in the day, a little, you know, a rule of thumb was one horsepower per cubic inch. We are a hundred more than that, which is insane to me. And our final torque figure was 438 foot pounds. I would call both of them 440 just to, you know, keep it easy to remember. So 440 foot pounds of torque or 438. That's a lot out of this small displacement. It's because of that stroker kit we put into it. I highly suggest that stroker kit. And we didn't do anything custom on this block. We didn't, the only thing that's, you know, custom is we told the machine shop we're doing a stroker kit so they had to clearance some things in the engine and that's it. Everything else you on the internet can go out and buy and bolt to your 302 Windsor and, or turn in 347 stroker and make this power. This is a recipe for 440 horsepower and 440 torque, guaranteed. It has been my absolute honor to do this huge video series for you guys. We built a 302 or 347 stroker in 11 videos and dynoed it. 
That's amazing to me, and I've shown every single nut and bolt so you at home could build this engine in your garage with the tools you own. All the links have been down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Summit Racing, for sponsoring this build. Make sure you're subscribed to catch future builds coming up, and I'll catch you next time.